When I record and mix drums, my go-to kick drum mic has always been the Sennheiser E901, and I've used it a lot over the years. Recently, I got my hands on another cheap microphone from Behringer to see how the two compare when played in a 22-inch kick drum and a 16-inch kick drum with some dynamic variety. The Behringer BA-19A and the Sennheiser E901 are known as boundary microphones and are great for using with kick drums. They're about the size of the palm of your hand and the cool thing about both of these mics is there is no need for a mic stand. Now, assuming the kick drum already has a sound hole cut away, just simply place the mic inside the kick drum and you're good to go. So we're gonna compare both of these microphones in these two different kick drums, and the drums will have the same small thin pillow in each of them to dampen the resonance because I am not very good at tuning drums. I gave it a try, but I don't know, we'll see how we go. So let's see how they compare to each other. Without any mixing, EQ, or compression, I noticed that Behringer was able to pick up deeper lows ranging between the 20Hz and 150Hz on the 22-inch and 16-inch kick, while ignoring most of the frequencies above that. I also had a much stronger output signal than the Sennheiser. I found the Behringer had a deeper, more rounded sound and was still able to produce that bottom end tone even in the smaller 16-inch kick drum, but lacked some of the brighter end of the frequencies for a tighter sound you know, when you're trying to get that slap of the beater. Keep in mind, the Behringer mic has a dip switch underneath, allowing you to filter frequencies, giving you a stronger low and high frequency attack. But I kept mine flat just for this review. In comparison, and still without any mixing or EQ, the Sennheiser mic still had some decent lows ranging between the 32Hz and 170Hz range, and it had a wider field of frequencies above that, making it sound brighter with some of the higher frequencies coming through, although its output signal was much quieter. I found the Sennheiser wasn't as deep and low sounding as the Behringer, but it sounded tighter and had a bit more range of frequencies to play with, especially trying to get that slap from the beater. Now, let's see how they sound with a bit of EQ and compression put on them. You can buy a Behringer BA-19A for around 125 New Zealand dollars from Rubber Monkey, while the Sennheiser E901 is around 369 New Zealand dollars. I like that the Behringer mic comes with a carry case with handles, as well as some soft, protective padding on the inside. It's just too bad that the Sennheiser E901, being the more expensive microphone, doesn't come with a better protective case like the Behringer mic, and instead, comes in a cardboard box with some foam to keep it in place. 
I was expecting the Behringer mic to be light and cheap, but it's actually quite sturdy and has got a bit of weight to it, with a solid construction and quality feel to it, just like the Sennheiser E901. Both mics are nearly similar in size, with some minor differences in the shape, and both can fit in the palm of your hand. The Behringer BA-19A weighs in at 487 grams, while the Sennheiser E901 weighs in a little bit heavier at 553 grams. The inputs are noticeably different with the Sennheiser mic being recessed for added support from unwanted accidental unplugging, while the Behringer mic sports some reinforcement around the input. Both mics require 48 volt phantom power to work, and once active, the Behringer mic lights up with a nice blue glow, letting you know there's phantom power being supplied. Both mics have a non-slip rubber pad underneath, as well as some holes for screws if you're wanting to mount them to something, which you can see are readily available on the Sennheiser mic, but you'll need to peel away some of the rubber pad on the Behringer mic to access this. I was a bit torn on this one in terms of my preference between the two mics, mainly because I've used the Sennheiser for such a long time it is my preferred go-to kick drum mic. However, I really like how the Behringer mic was able to pick up even lower ends of the frequency range, which is great when I'm working with smaller sized kick drums because I don't have to worry about losing the deep low ends of that kick drum. I guess in the end I still prefer the Sennheiser E901 just because of the tightness that it produces and I can still get some hard hitting lows from it. Then again, the Behringer has a filter switch for that exact reason to get a tighter sound. For those of you on a budget, the Behringer BA-19A is a very good entry point. It will get the job done for mixing and recording, plus you don't need a mic stand for it. Just place it on the inside of the kick drum and you're good to go. Thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for some more content, be sure to check out the links in the description below, and if you want to show some additional support, head over to my Patreon page. Thanks for watching guys.